Hi, I'm Jeff, lead pastor of Northview Community Church in Abbotsford, British Columbia. And this podcast is where I get a chance to interview people about things that I'm interested in and talk about whatever I want to talk about. Hello and welcome to the final episode of Conversations with Jeff Bucknam. My name is Levi, I'm the producer of this show. And I wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up about what you are walking into as you listen to this interview. Uh, we have, instead of Jeff's normal having a Q&A with one or two guests, we have more of a round table discussion this week featuring Jeff along with Ezra, Mark, and Jonathan, three members of our church's senior leadership team, as they uh, talk about their uh, experiences with Jeff over his time here in both personal and ministry capacities uh, and think about what's next as well going forward. So uh, we think this will be a really fun conversation for you to tune into. Get off your phone. Okay, you ruined it now, Mark. Okay, I can cut off the Ezra, engage the meeting. I am, I am with you. We're recording now. We're recording yeah, now. Yeah, let's go. Yes, like we're starting recording. now. Oh yeah. So let's I go. shouldn't say that thing. Leg up. Boo. Leg up. Welcome here to the final episode of Conversations with Jeff Buckton, live from the bowels of Northview Community Church, three two zero four zero Downs Road, Abbotsford, British Columbia, V four X one X five. Today I am joined by. The three other members of what's called the senior leadership team at, here at Northview. Senior leadership team was a concoction that I came up with when uh, when I when I first began. It was supposed to be the leadership of the church was kind of supposed to be it was the elders and then there was the lead pastor and executive pastor. But we expanded that out because we didn't trust ourselves, and so it's become the lead pastor and now three executive pastors. They are Mark Birch, who's the executive pastor of multiplication. But he's leaving that job so that he can become the lead pastor of Northview. But for today, you're the executive pastor of Multiplication, Mark. Welcome here. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan, Jonathan Giesbrecht. He is the executive pastor of administration, which oversees things such as the headphones that we listen to that this podcast. Work. And I can't hear anything in my right ear. The, uh, if you've ever seen the video screens from the side of the worship center and you've wondered why in the world can I barely see anything, that's Jonathan. And also the air conditioning's out in the church today and that also follows underneath his purview. So Jonathan, thank you for being here and failing miserably at everything you've done up to this point. Thanks for having How me. How old are you, Jonathan? Uh, not senior. He's a millennial and that's why he's failing. <laughs> Um, Ezra Okoti is the executive pastor of ministry development, which means that he's in charge of all the ministries. So if you ever felt let down by any pastor, that's his fault. Oh. Hey, yes. Ezra, why did, Ezra, let's begin with you. Why did you plan the vaccine clinic? <laughs> wow. Jeff, it is good to be here. You actually waited for your very last podcast conversations with Jeff Bucknam to have me on the show. You didn't have the guts to have me earlier. Mm. Hey, Jeff? Yeah, this it's is his parting true. shots. That's true. Yeah, he's so like, we're yeah. going to have a conversation around the table. This is going to be just free, free flowing in some ways. There All were right. some questions that were raised. Uh, yeah, they were dumb. Already that I don't even have access to. They were given to uh, these fair folks. And so uh, I'm going to kind of, well, here's what we're going to do, guys. Hmm. We are going to go around the table, and each person is going to ask a question that the rest of us can answer. Can or you can identify that? who in the group is going to answer that particular question. So we will start in a second with Mark, and then Jonathan, and then Ezra, and then and then me. All right. Okay. I got a question. All right. Here we go. Mark Birch. Other famous question. Other famous threesomes. So you said you had three executives. So uh, how many famous threesomes can we think of? Like I thought, Three Stooges immediately. The Three Musketeers. The three tenors. three amigos. The three amigos. Jonathan, do you have any uh, do you have any thoughts about this matter? Uh, the, the the Trinity. 
Wow. That was good. That Nia, is a famous Nia, one. The, the Neapolitan. West Coast Express, Vancouver Canucks. Oh, oh, I like that. Oh, you like that, right? Oh, see, that speaks oh. to me. Yeah, there you the West go. Coast. Oh, what the West that? Coast. The West oh, Coast my word. Express. So back in the era of the dark ages of the Canucks, which has more or less been its entire existence, mm-hmm. there was an era Sam's of hope. 2011 and 1994. Uh-huh, and in the 80s, early 80s. Was it 82 that they had another Stanley Cup? You weren't born. Yeah, I wasn't born then, yes. so I, I, can, I can't be held uh, responsible for missing that date. Uh, but the West Coast Express was Marcus Nasland, Todd Bertuzzi, and Brendan Morrison. Oh, uh, yeah. and they were, they were all just a cut. Like none of them were. Correct me if I'm wrong. None of them were highly touted prospects. They were all kind of like mid-range guys. I think Morrison might have been a second-round pick or something like that. None of them were amazing, mm-hmm. uh, coming out of uh, out of the, the the juniors. But but they all meshed really well together. They had a dynamic of uh, different skill set. So Morrison was his uh, playmaker. Bertuzzi was a big. He was a prototypical power forward. He was a power forward. And then forward. Naslin was the sniper. Yep. And they they were wonderful to watch. Jonathan, I, do you know what a sniper is? I do. I am aware of what a sniper is. You're a good man and I. What's a sniper, Jonathan? Sniper is the person who can hit targets at long range. Ooh. Shoot people in the head, yeah. That is one skill set of a sniper. All right. That's also a, hunters. That, yes. So that's a good question. Other other answers to this question could Neapolitan be... Neapolitan uh, ice cream. To which question? Oh. Neap- Neapolitan <laughs> ice cream. Uh, other other answers could be LeBron James, Ooh, wow. Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. Yeah. For those of you <laughs> Sonic fans out there, Xavier mm. McDaniel, Tom Chambers, and Dale Ellis. <gasps> I've got one. John uh, Horgan, oh. Bonnie Henry, oh. and Adrian Dix. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right, Jonathan, you have a question to ask next. Sure. Um, Ezra, I'm curious to know your answer, but also Mark's. What was your first impression of Jeff when you first met him? When I first met Jeff... I, no, I, Ezra, everybody's heard your I, dumb I, story I, about I, when you I, first I heard met that, me. No, no, not everybody. Those who are the services heard my story, but those who are... Li- right. Not everybody Where you heard my story. Anyways, long story what, short. Okay, wait, when was this? Give us some context. This was probably in 2007. Yeah. Mm. Jeff was the young adults pastor at Northview, and I was working at Willingdon Church at the time. And so we had Pastor Robin Duick, who was our former children's ministry pastor, was a pastor here, and her husband was my colleague at Willingdon. Um, and so he came and told the staff, we usually had a staff retreat, a pastor's retreat, and uh, we would invite a guest speaker to speak to us. So he came and was just touting this young adults pastor at North, and I was wondering, who on earth is this young adults pastor is going to come and talk to us? I mean, from North Community Church. Anyway, so we go to Harrison Hot Springs for this pastor's retreat, and I'm standing outside the hotel, and uh, a minivan pulls up. Uh, this was off season. And so I see this guy who gets out of this minivan and he grabs a purse. And I assume the purse was his wife's purse and, and a little boy, his son. And I was thinking, why are they coming to holiday at this time of year? Like it was off season. It was winter. It was just everything was closed at Harrison Hot Springs. Anyway. So he grabs these two things and he goes up, this, uh, like proceeds to enter the hotel. And I was like, okay. And then I see a woman get off and I was assuming, okay, that's the wife. And the woman goes back, opens the trunk of the van and then takes these huge suitcases and she's struggling to carry these things. And the dude never came back out. She was fine. And so she carries this thing she into the, the hotel gym. and then she comes back, takes care of the vehicle and the guy's totally gone, like not coming back. And I thought, what a jerk. Anyway, so later on at the conference meeting, we all passed a seat there, and who walks in? The jerk. And I was like, that's the guy who will be speaking to us? Oh, Steve dear. Martin? This is already a train wreck. And then Jeff opened his mouth. Now, before he and spoke... And it got even worse. No, before he spoke, before he spoke, uh, the pastors, they were kind of like thinking, okay, now what is this guy going to tell us? Man, this is just going to be a yawner. And so we just said, okay, fine, you know, just go through the motions. Jeffrey... You blew us away. Of course I did. I oh blew you away. My then I word. made you carry my bags. Yes. <laughs> and then from there, and then yeah, from the there, I started carrying. The yes, yeah. from there, I started carrying Jeff's bags. Yeah. Oh my! That's funny. That was good times. Oh. Yeah, good times. Yeah. What about you, Mark? When? Okay. When did you first meet Jeff? You know what? <clears throat> Jeff made such a huge impression on my life. I don't remember when I met him. Sounds impactful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The first meeting I remember with Jeff Bucknam was when he splurged and took me to the old spaghetti factory here in Abbotsford. (laughs) But obviously I had met him somewhere before in order to to arrange... (laughs) It actually shocks me. Can I tell you probably why? 
My uh, my our executive assistant uh, Cecilia Steenkamp, who has since moved to Australia and is still a wonderful delight. She was from obviously South Africa, and she she said she came and she would book these meetings with me. And she would book these meetings at different restaurants around town, and none of them I liked. She used to always she'd book them at like Swiss chalet, and I sit down with people, and I'd be like, "Why, why am I here?" I was like, "Why? Why did you uh-huh. book this at Swiss chalet?" And the guy, said, the, the other guy would be like, "I didn't book this at Swiss chalet. We were wondering what kind of weirdo you are to oh. book this at Swiss chalet." <laughs> and I said, "Ah, I think it's Cecilia." So I'm quite sure that Old Spaghetti Factory was a Cecilia move. Uh, I know I th- I've come to realize that she might have been doing it on purpose. I'm, this is so I, good. My respect for Cecilia just increased yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, oh, right this now. This is so good. Yeah. That's I amazing. would have sent Who's you the to best Apple spaghetti. Betty. Who's the best, best spaghetti he's ever had? Yeah. There was an yeah, elder of our sure. church, though, who used to, who used to I'd, go to, I'd go to lunch with when I first came here, uh, and he would take me to all of the most bizarre, hole in the wall, bad restaurants in this town. Like every Ezra knows who it is, and he Darryl would take Krop. me. No, he, no, okay. he would no, take Darryl. me. Apple Betty. We went to Apple Betty's. Ooh. We went to some sort of Chinese buffet thing. Oh, that is it Mandarin Garden? Maybe. Come it was on, the one on I South love Fraser Mandarin Way. Garden. Yeah, yeah, on the end of oh, uh, man, that's like was, my childhood. Defined it was, it is was, the Mandarin Garden. I knew that I was in trouble oh, when I went through the through through the 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 buffet, and at the end they had a, a Greek session section. They had like the what? Chinese food. <laughs> there was a Greek section. And then Jello for dessert. And I was like, oh my goodness. I don't, I don't think, think I can do this. Uh, it's the same like, thing. Uh, <laughs> so good. Will Sasiki and Kung uh, Pao Chicken. So good. So, so good. So good. Uh, anyway. That's good. I went to Ricky's All Day Grill and I, I with that guy and I asked one day when... I, in the morning, I asked, uh, "Can I can I get like a grilled steak?" And the lady was like, "Well, no, it's breakfast." And I said, "It says an all day grill," <laughs> and she didn't <laughs> she didn't think that was funny. The guy I was with was like, well, "I don't understand. You get it all day grill because okay, got it." <laughs> yeah. we, we got <laughs> it. The last time I went to Ricky's, yeah. Parting shots. Worst restaurant in Abbotsford. No no, oh. no, 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 oh, no, no. Wow. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Let's not do that. <laughs> There's a list. <laughs> oh, All right. No, I would tell you the favorite. Yeah, what's okay. your favorite? Yeah. Okay, hold well, on. No, this is Ezra's question. You're, you're done. The first uh, time you met Ezra, you get a question. Okay, what's so, your question? So my question is for Jeff. Uh, Jeff, what's the, what's the one thing that you would say about Northview, like your, your greatest memory, your greatest delight? of being at Northview from the time you came in and you started as young adult pastor to, to yesterday preaching your last sermon. If you were to pick one highlight that would say that was probably my best experience. Jeff, why are you, best why are you just staring at me right now? Is it, is it me? <laughs> and he's no. weeping. Am I your greatest no, success? I'm looking through right now? you, Jonathan. Oh, I see. Uh, I was confused. I, uh, you know, my, my greatest... Joy. It's not a particular event. One of my greatest joys is to see uh, young men and women like grow in their gifts and, and realize some of their potential. So yeah, in some ways, I was looking mm-hmm. toward people like Jonathan. But through me, apparently. No, just giving them an opportunity and seeing them flourish, and then go. It doesn't, you know, seeing them go out, whether or not they go into a formal church uh, somewhere, or if they're just a faithful. Uh, a church member or end up being an elder or whatever, it's it's awesome to see them, you know, littered throughout the area, right? Like, and I remember some of them are really hard to deal with, right? Yeah. But even then, I mean, Ezra and I went up, uh, visited one of our one of our guys, and he, oh, he was yeah. like, "Yeah, can I just want to apologize for all of the things I ever did to you guys because I came up to this location and it's hard. This is really hard." And I was like, "You, you're like, yeah. Why were you so pompous?" But that kind of thing is lovely too. We've Ezra and I've had that before, where people, guys, have come to us and been like, you know, most of everything you said was right, <laughs> but we were not in the place to listen to it at the time. But we loved. I just, I love the, but not just that. I love the interaction and the and the goofing around and the spending time with especially younger leaders um, as they learn and grow. It keeps me on my toes. And yeah, I've been on some trips with some younger leaders that have nearly killed me. Uh, 
Freddy, 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 Freddy. Freddy. And other, but I, what the I minute look, show? But, Jeff didn't say Freddy. Mark said Freddy. But but everybody, but all of those trips, I look back on now and I think, I loved, I loved all, every one of them. I loved, I loved the the. Yeah, you guys all know that. I mean, ninety eight percent of the time, I screw just screw around, and so I I enjoy the the camaraderie with. Uh, you know, men and women, men and women who are doing the ministry and just messing around. And I always found the younger the younger leaders to have more of an openness to those than those who've been in the been in the ministry for a while and have been really earnest about it. I think your favorite memory trip was me and you in New York around the trade the World Trade Center. No, it wasn't Ezra. That was no, so his good. favorite memory trip okay, was traveling was short, with me. <laughs> that was so good. Short little story about Ezra around the World Trade Center. So. Uh, to, I don't know what it was, but it was it was right when they they had, uh, were rebuilding World Trade not One, whatever the new one is. The mm-hmm. and they've left the. If you go there, you can see the the memorial. And we were coming right near the memorial, and Ezra started saying as loud as he could in his African accent, <laughs> "I think 9/11 was a conspiracy." <laughs> Oh, come on. Not all the buildings went down. What about that one building over there that not, did not come down? George Bush, he's the one who... And I was like, dude, you're going to get killed. The people are you're going ki- to get killed. Jeff did not want to be anywhere no. near me. No, I was like, he was dude, running. Because you look on some of the people's faces. They oh, were showing yeah. up there, you know, because of solemn and stuff. And, and Ezra's yelling, it's an inside I, job. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, dear. So ugly Kenyan in New York City. Right? <laughs> not no, you know, you know. For uh, all the headache and the the pain that Jeff gives me, uh-huh. I had to get back to him. Yeah. Yes, you should have seen him laughing at me in Chicago when I was shoved right to the wall when Obama's motorcade was passing by in Chicago <laughs> years by ago. Bl- oh, a by a black cop. cop! Let me. And, Why did they uh, shove you? Todd to Wicken stand right on the edge of the street <laughs> so he could see it. But Ezra, they pushed him all the way oh, back shit. against the wall. Against the wall. <laughs> oh man! So you're gonna have to move back. He kept saying to him, "Hey Ezra, <laughs> tell us the uh, shopping in Texas at the mall yeah. with Jeff Story." <laughs> shopping the mall in Texas. Oh man, we've shopped so many times I can't even remember. Well, we went to a place. I remember we we found a place. What was it Bass Pro Shops or some big place? And in Texas, they sell all sorts of weaponry. <laughs> <laughs> and so we went to the back yes. and we just started grabbing as many oh, big shoot. guns and taking <laughs> pictures with them oh, <laughs> as we could. Yes, I think yes, remember yes, we got yes, you like yes, a crossbow yes, or yes, something yes, like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. And we were oh, sending the man. pictures back to the church <laughs> and to other Mennonite friends. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, so yeah. there was a, we were, Ezra and I were once at a, at a conference in uh, Kitchener, Ontario. Ontario, and we went to this little, uh, it, was a, it was a Mennonite Brethren conference, right? And these conferences are filled, I mean, like the pacifists of pacifists are there. And so we went to this little... Uh, what was it? It's like a farmer's market yeah, type a, thing, but it it's was always, more of a hippie yeah, farmer's it's market. Always there anyway. Outside the farmer's market was this t- was a table with a bunch of T-shirts on it, and one of them had the the Warner Brothers, you know, the Warner Brothers uh, symbol WB. It's yeah. the filmmaker, and uh, and it was a black shirt, and it had the Warner Brothers logo in the middle, and it says, "If you see the police, Warner Brother." <laughs> That was so good. <laughs> I, and oh, I, 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 want, I was telling Ezra, I'm gonna get. I have to get this no. for you so that you can wear it in the corner of this the whole time. You have to wear it the rest of the conference. It was oh, like so ten good. bucks, and he terrible. wouldn't do it. It was yeah. so good. He wouldn't do it. It's like, oh, come on, this would be I, the best uh, thing. I regret yeah. not doing this. Warner yeah. I regret not doing this. Yeah. It would be fun. Anyway, that was my question. All right, so here's my question: What will you not miss about me? <clears throat> What will we not miss about you? Wow, that's a long list. All right, where you go. Somebody. Mark, first, what will you not miss about me? Dang, you know what? I saw that question on the list, and Jeff, uh, just honestly, I can't think of anything. <laughs> not a thing. <laughs> Jonathan, what will you not miss about me? Uh, you know, it's going to be a bittersweet thing. Uh, there's going to be days where I am going to miss this. But the incessant heckling, yeah. especially around my soccer team, yeah. when my team is clearly and objectively better than yours, I yeah, just right don't understand. Yeah. Oh, clearly. Yeah. 
Always have been. Always but honestly, be. you're not going to miss that. Okay. Gonna, but I'm not. This is the hard pine part. for that. There's going to be days where I'm like, oh, man, it's so nice. I don't have to hear Jeff going, rah, 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 Liverpool's this, rah, 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 the projectors aren't working. Rah. But then there's other days I'm just going to miss that. By this mm. time next week, you're going to be weeping. Maybe. No, you, Bring you, Jeff back. And I'm going to be like, Mark, the... can you make fun of my <laughs> soccer team Ezra, for what me? Are you gonna miss? If you've ever had the privilege of watching a football game with Jeff Bucknam, good oh, luck. Oh, yeah. Oh my! What kind goodness. of football? You mean uh, no, not soccer? No, like, like the, the Seahawks. Seahawks. Yeah. <laughs> oh my word! Oh my word! So you're not gonna miss that? No. Oh my goodness! No. Jeff goes wild. It's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but wildly <laughs> negative. <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> like wildly negative. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah. Uh, it, this I will not miss. So I, I'm with Jeff. I've been in an ditch. abusive relationship with the Seahawks for my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and they are they are the abuser. Oh dear! And eh, I that's the, okay. when they, when I, I keep coming back to them, and then then they when they do me wrong again, I just lose my mind. See, I knew it. So yeah. I, first so, time I travel, oh one of the first dear. times traveling with uh, Jeff, and I'm with him and Ditch Dreger <laughs> down in I don't know South Carolina or something like that. Mm-hmm. So we were the three of us shared a hotel like kind of a suite type thing. Yeah, I was out. Who knows what? Out for a walk, out for a coffee or something. I come back. Halfway down the the hallway, I can hear these voices yelling, <laughs> screaming. No! And then I realize as I get closer to <laughs> our room, room, it's our room. <laughs> and I don't know if it was Seahawks or who yeah, it was, it was but Seahawks. like you were being. Oh, you just definitely terribly. Seahawks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> yes. I was so mad. Oh, I get I, mad at the Seahawks so a lot. So I, I began, uh, I became a Seahawks fan. Um, Steve Weens, our former executive pastor, is the one who introduced me to football, like to taught me how the, the rules and everything. So I started loving the Seahawks, and then I made the mistake of watching a game with mm, Jeff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, he took the entire heart away. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness. I don't even watch them anymore. <laughs> it's funny. I actually, I have to record it, and then if I find out that they won, I'll watch it. Yeah. If they didn't win, I'm not going to do it. Don't you do that with Arsenal, too? I used to. Um, yeah. They're so bad now that I'm watching. like, yeah, I don't mind anymore. You can't handle can watching them yeah. lose. Absolutely. Yeah. Very competitive. Yeah, that's something you won't miss. People in that's Abbotsford true. won't miss me at, at like, basketball uh, yeah. games. and Or, like, baseball games. Baseball games. All the umps in Abbotsford are like, I'm thank like, you, Lord. <laughs> Get rid of him. <laughs> all right. Although I'm turning around, my so question. I never had a problem with it. Anyway, mm. yeah. Go ahead, my Mark. Question. Mark. Yeah. For all of us, mm. what's the one thing that you are gonna miss about Jeff Buckner? Oh man, I can't think of anything. <laughs> oh no, wrong answer. Sorry, that was the ne- uh, that was for the lo- the last answer. Sorry. Man, there are so many things. Whatever, just say one. There, uh, there, are, there are many things. Uh, can I say two? Okay. Yes. Okay. The first is I will miss traveling with Jeff. Jeff and I have had so many adventures. Hey, Matt Sean said he's a whiner, though. What? No, it's Ma- true. No, 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 no. It's no. true. Matt, Matt doesn't know Jeff. He doesn't know Jeff. I've traveled with Jeff the most, I will say, of all the staff here. Um, traveling with Jeff has been a remarkable delight. We laugh. We share personal stories. We laugh until we cry. And then when we travel with other people, we prank them. Mm. That I will miss. That I will miss a ton. So that's the first. The second thing I, I would say is I told Jeff this once before, and I'll say it again here publicly. Not many people in life have the privilege of being mentored by someone they admire. And I will say Jeff has been a strong mentor to me. Uh, the way I think theologically, the way I preach, the way I view life. When I met Jeff, and, and we'd be talking about life, every conversation, he'd always go back to the Bible. And then the Bible would shape his views and his comments about just general things in life. It could be how how you, you're a dad, a husband, a uh, husband just doing life he always went back to the scriptures and i always came back home thinking man i need to be more like this guy so that i will miss yeah i'm gonna yeah except for when i cheer for the seahawks (laughs) yes exactly yeah Yeah. i'm gonna miss room for sanctification (laughs) nothing jonathan no i think uh, no i i have an answer i think what i'm gonna miss is um uh i think well so i think you and i are both wired very similarly uh in the sense that we kind of have a similar uh we, one of the things, one of the tools we use here is a disk profile, which is a, it's basically a, a 
how you tend to handle uh, stress and conflict and all this other and stuff. You're and you're both Jeff high I, on the irritation we're, scale. We're both high on the irritation scale. We get irritated quickly. But I think we are both wired similarly. <laughs> I think it's um, irritate others quickly. That, I think that's primarily <laughs> the, the thing. I do have that tendency. But no, I think what I'm going to miss most, uh, I, I, love, I love Jeff's humor. And I love, um, I love being on the other end of his poking. I, I mean, I mentioned it, I'm not going to miss it, but I am. But I think the thing I'm going to miss most is, uh, I, I don't remember where we were going. But you and I were in a car going somewhere. I, I don't even, I have no recollection where we were. Uh, but you had this weird way of like just joking around and suddenly within like a turn of a, of two seconds, suddenly it just got really deep and vulnerable and personal. And it was like, and you were encouraging me in some of the stuff that I was having a hard time with. Um, I was a young dad with young kids and home life is stressful. And um, you were super vulnerable with me and like on the turn of a dime. And like you went from like poking fun at me to like edifying me and encouraging me. And then like within two seconds later, it was back to teasing me again. But there was that there's those moments in there where it was like, I feel like this guy actually genuinely cares about me. Yeah, there was and a glimpse of true humanity. Just, just a tiny, <laughs> tiny window awesome. in my 10 years or however long I've been here. But like, I, I think this guy actually cares about me. Yeah. Uh, but like, I no, and you and you you talk about like the leadership development part, and and it's not just me. There's a whole slew. There's an, there's a lineup of of young men, young women who've been uh, encouraged by you, and yeah, <clears throat> poked fun at, and it's all in good fun. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, we all feel. I I think we would all say to a to a person, we'd all say that the 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 part of that whole experience that that made um, that made it so effective is that we actually felt like you cared about us. So you had a really you had a really unique balance. I do. I did care about you. I'm gonna miss that balance. You know, I'm gonna miss that balance. In that moment, he cared for you. The brief. Right. Yeah. Whose turn is it now? It's my Mark. turn. Mark's. Oh. So hey, uh, I'm gonna say no, no, for a the thing question. that I miss. He's no, no, no. I, have, I got to answer my he own question. The, question. Uh, the thing I'm gonna miss is outside of Northview because that's. Primarily where I got to know Jeff and uh, I observed him over the years. So you, you guys know the old story of the, the emperor has no clothes? No. What are you yep. talking about? No, you, the, no the children's nursery rhyme thing. So where the emperor, the, the tailors come to town and they're going to sew him the, the best clothing ever, but it's all a spoof. And so they're sewing and sewing and sewing these imaginary clothes that only elite people can see. Mm. And they're, ooh, ah, ooh. And they, every time the oh, emperor looks, I, I he doesn't see anything, but he yeah. can't know that he's not seeing anything. So he goes along with it. They come in and they dress him. He's totally naked. Right. They go out on the streets to parade the emperor in his new clothes. And everybody in the kingdom, of course, has to a, a, admire the king's clothes, except for one little kid who steps up and goes, the king's naked. I think Jeff's that little kid. <laughs> <laughs> So I admired, <laughs> yes, yes, I admired yes. Jeff that some people, uh, I can't use the English word, but I'll risk the, uh -oh. I'll risk the do German we have a bleep, word. Do we have a bleep we button? We could blip it out maybe. Okay, we'll have a bleep button. Here we go. Ready? So there's a word in German called beep. There you go. So I think Jeff was not afraid to be that little kid. And where I saw it so often hmm. was in our conference meetings where we'd be having a happy old conversation and then Jeff would go to the microphone and would be like, hey, the king has no clothes. And everyone in the room would be like, what? And then it would start us down a new track of conversation. <clears throat> and I didn't always handle that with the right tone. But yeah, I, but, would, I tend to ask the question about the elephant. Hey, look, an elephant. Yeah. <laughs> look. At <all> look. <laughs> yeah, that would be a simpler illustration to yeah, just say the elephant yeah, in the room. Yeah, yeah. But it, the king have, has no clothes. Yeah. is you know, much more. That provocative. is true. I'll I miss can't, that. I can't handle it when uh, we're not honest and don't talk about the things that, that are real. I think part of it's because I like to mess around so much and I find it hard to mess around with people who are holding some sort of grudge or something. So, mm, yeah. All right, so uh, <laughs> we've got Jonathan, Ezra, and, uh, and then that'll be it. Jonathan, uh, your question. question. Yep. Uh, okay, let's totally flip this up on its head. Um, what's something you're looking forward to most in the next year or two? Me. You personally. And then I'm also going to ask that same question of Mark and Ezra. Okay. So it's like a, a yeah, post yeah. Jeff question. I I am looking Mark. forward to in the next year to uh, the, the renewed vigor of um, a, a vision for a, a church that I think I can help. So that's one thing I have missed over the last little while. That Northview had gotten to a point where it was doing, in my opinion, really really well. 
and that so that my work actually started to shrink down to preaching and teaching mostly. And I did, yeah, of course, did leadership. I came to, I probably came more alive during uh, times when the church needed needed it. So when our executive pastor left, I needed to reorganize some stuff, and I, that brought me some energy. And then um, when um, COVID started, to be honest with you, I, I gained a lot of energy because I was like, ooh, a challenge. But as time's gone on, I just, I continue to sink back, sink back into the, like, man, what's, what's next? So I tend to be a change agent. That's what Mark was pointing out there. I, I work best with situations that are imperfect and need to have something changed. And so this, this opportunity to go to Harvest Bible Chapel, which has had some challenges in the past, is something I really look forward to. I look forward to tackling that and figuring out how and getting to know the different people there and understanding the history and the culture and kind of exegeting the, the, the scene and figuring out how, how, how we can best move forward uh, in obedience to God to see the church flourish. So that's what I'm looking forward to easily the most. And I like also like the adventure of it. Like I was preaching this weekend and I said that, you know, you, 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 see, you see the power and presence of God. You behold it when you're on the mission where you need to behold it. And I am, I am looking forward to seeing that kind of thing. Um, I think that Harvest Bible Chapel is going to help me grow in Christ. Uh, I think that there, there's a lot of ministry things that they do that I, I went, even when I went there, I thought, man, my spiritual life needs their help in those mm. ways too, right? So some of their, their worship ministries have been really uh, helpful to me. Vertical worship was great. And just some of the spirit and heart that they have are things that I think that I could, I could use more of. I'm, I'm mm. way too cynical. <clears throat> and so I could use some good Midwestern earnestness. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. What about you guys? What are you looking forward to this next year? It's good. Uh, I'll dovetail on what uh, Jeff's saying. I got one for watching Jeff's life and then watching Northview's. Uh, I would just add to what Jeff said. I look to see uh, the renewal and the resurgence of Harvest again. Mm-hmm. Uh, that church and that movement of churches uh, was really quite remarkable in, in many of the things they accomplished. I think it's something like 190 churches planted out of that movement, many of them in Canada. Uh, I've got a lot of friends and even some family who've been involved in Harvest Churches over the years, and so they have a they have an incredible legacy behind them. The last four or five years have been pretty challenging and a bit messy. What I hope to see is that Jeff can pull back the best of the mm-hmm. years in the past and then pour some fuel on it and reinvigorate that whole planting and multiplication mm-hmm. machine that they really were. And even the partnership then in Canada, because many of their churches have been in Canada, so as much as Jeff's leaving us uh, here in Abbotsford, I look forward to partnering with him mm-hmm. across Canada in church planting. So uh, he's going to be back already. We've booked him for our church planters retreat in October, and he'll be speaking here at Northview. And so we hope to keep him engaged in the Canadian scene. I can, look you, can you repeat to that. that last sentence, just for those who may have heard that? Can you confirm it? I can confirm because Val Bosch, who controls Jeff's life, Still. has confirmed that yeah. he will come back and speak at Northview. You heard it here first, folks. Jeff you is coming back. First. <laughs> yes. For a reunion tour. The second Seriously, coming of like, Jeff. Se- he's like long COVID. Can't get rid of him. <laughs> it's the variant of it's Jeff is coming back. It's the second wave. <laughs> <laughs> Ezra, what about you? Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what the Lord will do in the life of Northview and obviously in the life of Harvest. Um, when transitions come, uh, very few people uh, like change, um, particularly if things are going really well. Like Northview, things were going very well. The church was growing. The ministry was hopping. Uh, the vision was good and hot. We were planting churches and developing networks. And so when I heard um, Jeff whisper to me way back that he thinks that his ministry is done here, my heart sank and I thought, oh, this is the end of this wonderful season of remarkable ministry. But then as we talked some more and prayed and talked some more, it became more and more evident that this is what the Lord was leading uh, Jeff to transition and then for us as Northview to turn uh, to, to jump into a next chapter. And so my excitement and my joy and my thrill is to see what the Lord has in store for these two churches, because I think Harvest being what it is, like it's a big machine. Yes, it's gone through some challenges, but I think with good, strong leadership, man, that church will go back to what it used to be. 
And I think Northview has uh, the same potential here in Canada to plant churches and develop leaders and to see growth and in, 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 in a, a huge gospel movement uh, here in BC and across this nation. So I'm just excited to see how these two churches will partner mm -hmm. and the churches that will be planted and the leaders who will emerge from the ministries of these two churches. It's very exciting. Two flourishing, multiplying churches are better than one. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what we're aiming at. So, okay, Ezra, you get great. the last. You get the last shot here. Yeah. So, Jeff, question to you. Um, obviously, leadership is almost like writing a sermon. It's never finished. It's never done completely. So, when you reflect on your 13 years as lead pastor at Northview, what is the one thing that you would say you you would have left incomplete? And you would say to Mark as the next lead pastor and to us as senior leadership, the three of us, Mark, Jonathan, and I are here. So Well, we've begun church we've begun the idea of church planting hmm. and the initial stages of it, but hmm. not I actually think that the uh, the spring has been wound, but the actual letting go of it and it, it yeah, that needs to happen. And part of the reason I was preaching this weekend on the mission is that my big, my big hope for Northview is that people will gain a vision. I, this is why I think Mark's actually going to bring more than I did. Mark's got a real heart for the lost in a way that I, I don't have. I do have a heart for the lost, but I, you know, my, my focus tends to be on, you know, th theological clarity and perseverancey sort of stuff. Uh, Mark really cares a lot about the people who don't know Jesus in the community. Uh, in a way that that I think transcends mine, and I think that that focus at Northview should should be the next thing. I did not. I'm not. A, I'm not a gifted evangelist, and so as a result, it was not the emphasis that I brought always to things. I wanted us to be capable of reaching out, but I mean, I've talked to Mark when he first came. That that's just not something that we're we're good enough at. And I'm my hope is that as more evangelistically hearted people are in leadership of the church, that that would be a spirit that spreads through this church, and that part of the reason I wanted to preach on the mission of God at the end is because that is, that is the thing. So if there's a thing in the, that I'm looking forward to in the future for Northview, it's that I think that that heart will be rekindled because it was part of Northview for a long, long time. It still is, right? But it, it but yeah. more, more prevalent under Vern's leadership than mine. Yeah, so. but true confessions. And Jeff, one of the things I've always admired about you is your honesty, like your gut level honesty. And I think for anybody who's listening out there, the the question mark that we've often talked about at SLT is the the pride that can slip into a church like Northview when everything's going great. Mm -hmm. But to do the the honest evaluation to go, it's awesome that, you know, whatever, 6,000 people call this church their home, but how many of those have come to faith here? Mm -hmm. And that's not a Northview issue alone. That's a Canadian church across the country. It's mm -hmm. something like 90% of our growth is either transfer growth from other churches, which is about 70%, and then about another 20% our kids are finding faith and staying in the faith, which we celebrate. That's amazing. And only about 10% is actually coming from the outside. Mm. And when you look at that, honestly, how much of that's evangelistic growth, it's, it's even less. Mm. So it's not just a North U challenge. It's a Canadian church challenge. Uh, but I've always appreciated your honesty, Jeff. Like you're like, I think the phrase you used is like, hey, we, we make a good burger. And people choose where they go to buy their burgers, and they come to Northview because we make a good burger. Mm. So I appreciate that honesty. But we, yeah, it's not about making better burgers. I mean, obviously, we want to do the things the best we can. But at the mm. end of the day, we want to see lost people saved yeah. and lives transformed by the power of the gospel. Totally. So I think that's something that the future of Northview will probably have more emphasis on, and I'm really excited about that. It's going to be awesome. Well, this has been fun. God bless you guys. It's been fantastic. I want to give a public shout out to Levi Friesen, <laughs> the great producer of this what, what? Produ produced podcast. Levi, I want to make sure that everybody knows Levi gave me COVID. So thank you. Thank <laughs> yeah. you for that, Levi. <laughs> the last time I was in this room that we're in right now, Levi breathed a lot in this room and I caught COVID from him and uh, it kept me out of the country for three weeks and then they made me quarantine and house arrest for two more. So you also gave Levi, it to I want to thank you though. that you made me in jail for f a month of my life. So that was, that was good, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Anyway, actually Levi has been a, 
a star. He's fantastic. He's got a great future. Amen. Right? Oh, yeah. Levi's totally. a preacher. He's going to be fantastic Amen preacher in the days ahead. So we're really excited to see what's going to happen mm-hmm. with him. Ezra, thank you, brother. Jonathan, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Mark, it's been a pleasure. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Peace out. Thanks for listening to Conversations with Jeff. Till next time, love God, do what you want, and don't be stupid. <laughs>